and welcome to Healthy Food, Happy You, where our goal is to show you the benefits of a well-planned, whole foods, plant-based diet. And today, I could not be more excited to be here with you and share our wonderful guest, Dr. Neil Renard. He is a nutritional researcher, author, and health advocate. He started Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in 1985. It's a nonprofit organization that works towards preventive medicine and ethical research standards. Mm -hmm. Can you, let's, let's talk about this wonderful organization that, that you started. Can we just dig right on in? Sure, uh, we got started in 1985. It's exactly the opposite of everything I was really prepared for, I have to say. I grew up ah. in Fargo, North Dakota. Okay. Come from a long line of cattle ranchers. And every day of my life it was roast beef, baked potatoes, and corn. Texas girl. Yeah, so you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. But, however, but you know, you learn things. And research has really shown that when people focus their diets not on the kinds of foods that I grew up with, and I guess you might have grown up with sure. too, but on really the bounty of nature, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans, and all the great things that that can, can translate into in your kitchen, your health can just rejuvenate. Absolutely. And for me, when I was in medical school, I was taught diabetes is irreversible. Heart disease, it just gets worse, it never gets better. Right. But what we found is that when people make diet changes, if they make the right changes and if they do enough, it's suddenly a two-way street where people who have been getting worse get better. And so here at PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, we've been doing those research studies and we've been working to get the word out so that people are aware of the power of healthy food. So I've got to ask, where do you think this problem has always been that way? I mean, from the beginning of time, have we just always been unhealthy eaters geared towards that diet? I mean, did this problem spike at a certain point in time? How did we get to the standard American diet, the sad diet? <laughs> yeah, um, if you look back say 100 years, back in 1909 actually. Okay. That's when the Department of Agriculture started tracking what people ate. Sure. At that time we didn't really have such a healthy diet even back then. Okay. Uh, but since that time everything has gotten worse. We did have okay. a fairly meaty diet. At that time your average American ate about 124 pounds of meat in a year. That was a lot. Seems but, like a lot. Yeah, but it has gone up. And as of 2004, it wasn't 124 pounds anymore. It was over 200 pounds per person per year. Wow. Now, it started to inch down. People have started to get wise sure. and think, you know, maybe the veggie burger is what I'm going to choose today. Right. And we've got more choices. So we're down to about 190 or a little bit, a little bit under now. But the point I'm making is that Americans haven't had a very healthy diet compared to much of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And it has gotten progressively less healthy over the past century or so until just the past decade or so when I think we're turning the corner. I was reading your blog last night and I was actually angry. I had to stop reading for a while because I saw an article you had posted about our tax dollars going to direct funding of the meat and dairy industry and even though nutritional guidelines have gotten wiser and come out with half of your plate needs to be fruit and vegetables. We're not putting our money where our mouth is. And I had no idea I was such a big source of the problem. I'm putting my money into the, the wrong thing. Inadvertently. Inadvertently, yes. sure. So how do we change this? Yeah, it's, you're putting your finger on a huge issue right now, which is why is, the, why is it that a burger is so cheap? Well, sure. right now, the government gives enormous perks mm -hmm. uh, to industry in, in a whole variety of ways. For example, let's say I've got a lot of cattle and I need to raise them for beef. Well, the feed grains that I'm going to feed to my cattle are heavily subsidized. Right. And so your tax dollars and mine and everybody else's goes to make it cheaper and cheaper to raise cattle. Um, it's not just cattle. It's chickens, it's pigs. Americans sure. now eat more than a million chickens per hour. Is there right anything now. we can do to, I mean, what would you say the average person who really wants to see this change? And, and for me personally, I was telling you before mm -hmm. the taping, I have children in school and their diet 
you know, unless we pack up lunches and you're you're in that awkward stage where kids want to be like their friends and For sure. so they're they're trusting the school system to provide proper nutrition. Um, but she largely doesn't have a choice over what she eats at school. The 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 meal comes with dairy milk, not soy milk. She doesn't have a choice of soy milk unless she ponies up extra money for the right. soy milk. So why aren't these options that have been shown healthier yeah. provided to our children? Um, I think there are things that people can do. Of course they can tell their members of Congress that they don't want those subsidies to continue, but on the local level, you can go to the school and meet with the cafeteria manager, or better still, meet with a principal sure. who, who, who hires these people. And That's more, a great idea. And more and more people that. are doing it. And, and part of the reason is well, there is more childhood obesity than there ever was, and so there are so concerned sad. parents. But there's another reason, and that is a lot of children can't digest milk very well. Mm -hmm. Milk has lactose sugar in it, and more and more kids um, are lactose intolerant, meaning sure. they drink a glass of milk, and a couple hours later they have to run to the bathroom, and, exactly. they, and they're, they're sick, and, and then I they go to the nurse's office and so forth. Exactly, and I don't think it's that more and more kids are lactose intolerant. I think they're realizing yeah. We've been lactose intolerant. It's just not the most nutritious option for our human bodies to consume. So our bodies struggle with it, and I think we're realizing it's common to, it's that, to struggle with it. And you know, it also when when the the food service manager was in school, there mm -hmm. was there really was not the range of choices that we have now. No, Rice that's true. milk, oat milk, almond milk, yes. soy milk, hemp milk, every possible what, what kind. Kind of milk you want? And so it's great for, for them to have these things available. And I am sure the day is going to come when those foods are more available. And every child ought to have available every single day in school a vegan option, whether it's Agreed. the veggie burger or vegan pizza. Or it's so easy to make sloppy joes with all plant-based exactly. ingredients. And the suddenly, suddenly you've got the answer to childhood obesity. Suddenly mm -hmm. you've got a child who's maybe on the sports team and performs a little bit better because they don't have, have all that fat in their bloodstream. Yeah. So they're quicker in, the, in track, they're a, uh, better at swimming. A lot of our staffers here at PCRM are very athletic. Sure. And the healthy diet that they follow powers them. And that's not gonna be lost on kids. Here's what happens now. If cheese prices fall, Mm -hmm. or meat prices fall on the, on the general market. The government buys up a lot of meat and a lot of cheese. And what do they do with it? it they actually have it, so they send it into schools. And it's cheap or it's free. Cheap. And suddenly you see Agreed. on the menu, there's a whole lot of cheese pizza and cheese yes. burgers, and, and the fat content of the diet is going up, and the right. kids start gaining weight. And then when kids gain weight, what happens? They get into a wrangle where the parents say, you ought to be exercising more. And the child does, mm -hmm. but they still have trouble losing weight. Or sometimes they starve themselves a little bit to try to get rid of the weight. And what does that lead to? It leads to eating disorders. And sure. it leads to the low self-esteem you were describing. So instead of that, what do we do? We say, why don't we offer healthy foods every day? Let's have a, a pizza that doesn't have the cheese all over it, but has all the vegetable toppings and, and, and healthy things. Let's have, have good choices. Then suddenly the kids trim down. They feel healthy on their own. Mm -hmm. They're feeling of, that, that they're capable of doing things is reinforced, whereas a child who's failing on one diet after another, they really just get beat up. We, we can change that. Is this something you think can be changed within a generation? Or is this, and the reason I ask this is because I was talking to a parent the other day whose son had just gotten a bad report at the doctor, mm -hmm. he's overweight, he needs to change his life immediately or drastic consequences. And his mom felt so bad for him that, what do you think she did? <laughs> she took him to McDonald's to comfort him. Right. And it just contributes to the problem. Is this a mindset that we've established in America that this food is convenient, it's good for you, it's, you know, it helps you work longer hours, it helps you feed your family faster. Is this a mindset that we can change in this generation? Um, I think we have developed this mindset, uh, and we have come to accept unhealthy foods. We've come to accept that our kids are going to be heavy. We've come to even accept Agreed. that our children will not live as long as we will. Mm -hmm. We've come to accept that they're going to have health care costs that Why? are going to... Why? Why, parents? Well, Why? It doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> yeah. but, the, but the question is, can we change it? The answer is, we can change it right away. Can we change it within a generation less than that? 
because let's face it, it's been just within this generation that the That's obesity true. has come in. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think. The past generation, I, I think of it as sort of my generation, we had to deal with smoking. Right. It was a big issue. Are we, gonna, are we gonna take tobacco out of our hospitals? But the generation now, they all know smoking's bad, but what they're dealing with is food. And if we can bring good, healthy choices into our schools and into our homes, we're going to do better. That's true. Agreed. I think that um, that's a perfect example. Nowadays, smoking is not in style, so the healthy diet could be something that is really appealing to us. There are a lot of people that say, you know, well, if I have to forgo burgers, life is not worth living. Right. I'd rather live the shorter life. If people want to eat in a more healthful way, they're just right. a little nervous. They're like the person sure. who's at the swimming pool. It doesn't look good, but what do they do? They kind of go over to the edge and they stick their toe in and they think, I'm not sure, is the water cold, is it warm? We're that way with food too. Once you jump in yeah. and you give it a try, you see that it's really okay. So I try to break it into steps. If somebody says, you know, my family's overweight or we've got diabetes or our joints hurt or I've got migraine headaches or many of these things that are, are food related. Mm -hmm. My first step is not to say, I'm going to take away everything out of your refrigerator right now. What I say is, let's take a week or two okay. and let's explore healthier foods. And we've got lots of recipes for you. I take a piece of paper. I write breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. I love checklists. And, and, Those and are I great. say, well, that's exactly it. We say, okay, let's take a week and let's figure out what we like. So for breakfast, all right, uh, I haven't had oatmeal since I was a kid. And frankly, it doesn't, it tastes like wallpaper paste. Well, let's, <laughs> put, let's put some berries and some strawberries and let's put some sure. cinnamon and raisins on it, make it nice. Okay, that's okay. Uh, blueberry pancakes. If I have bacon, let me try the, the veggie bacon. If I have okay. sausage, let me try the veggie sausage. So my goal is not to change my diet. My goal just now is to get used to, to new tastes and try some sure. new, new ideas. And then do the same for lunch. If I'm going fast food, go into the taco place. Mm -hmm. I'll have the bean burrito, skip the cheese. Okay. Uh, I'm going to the submarine sandwich place. Instead of the meat and cheese, let me have lettuce, tomato, cucumber, spinach, olives, a little red wine vinegar. Yeah. Toast it for me. And then after a week or so, you've got a breakfast and a lunch and a dinner and some snacks that you like. Mm -hmm. Then whenever you're ready, I encourage people to jump in the swimming pool, so to speak. Try it three weeks on a totally plant-based diet. No long-term commitment, but see how you do. And what almost always happens, two things. First of all, people are healthier. They're losing weight, their energy's coming back, their blood sugar's improving, everything's getting better physically. The second thing is their tastes are changing. Mm -hmm. There's, at first they thought, gee, I, I wasn't sure how I'd like this, but... They it, start it, craving the, the healthier The healthy options. things. And it, it's like when a person goes from whole milk to skim milk. What's the, what's the skim milk like at first? Water. It's watery, <laughs> but after a, a little while, they get used you to don't. it. You don't and want anything else. If you, you went back to the whole milk, it's like paint. It's right. like cream. Now, I'm not saying that skim milk is health food, but what, if you go to soy milk, sure. at first it's a little odd, but then you get used to mm -hmm. it, and then you don't want the, the other anymore. The first week on a vegan diet, you know, the person's going to feel it's a little light. Sure. You know, do I have to acquire a taste for folk music now? You know, do I have to wear tie-dye and <laughs> all that kind of stuff? No, but, no lifestyle changes other yeah. than just glowing skin. Yeah, exactly. After a week or two, you get absolutely hooked. Yeah. And then if you went back and had a double bacon cheeseburger, you'd think, I'm, I'm just really past that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just past that. And then you discover you can eat out at just about any restaurant. Sure. They've got the things for you. I was at an Italian restaurant last night. They said, how about a glass of wine? How about a nice salad, a bowl of, they had lentil soup, or uh, minestrone, or yeah. pasta fagiol, which uh, the pasta bean soup. Sure. And then they said, we've got angel hair pasta, topped with artichoke hearts, wild mushrooms, chunky tomatoes, uh, a cup of espresso at the end. Yes. This is not punishment. No, it's but wonderful. You can have your five course meal and, mm -hmm. and feel great. You don't feel heavy and sick and sad. And you tease through it. There's not one speck of cholesterol in it. There's not one speck of animal fat. You leave feeling really good. Agreed. How about how long does it take a person's taste to change? So if someone's saying, okay, I'll give you a week, is that enough, really? I often like to take a little bit longer than that. I like to take about a three-week period because I want a person to be able to go through different challenges of day-to-day -day life. So let's say we're at a restaurant. What can I have that's on the menu? Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm at somebody else's house. I want to go, go to work and, and think about the different choices. So I like to take a little bit longer. 
maybe about three weeks. But it's not forever. And let me tell you something. It is so much easier to change your diet yeah. than it is to quit smoking or something like that. It's, you, you'll get into it much faster. Sure. Three words. New Year's resolution. This is the perfect time to have this show on. And can you talk a little bit about your Kickstart program that PCRM has to offer? Yep. Uh, this is modeled after research studies that we do here at okay. PCRM, where we typically bring in people and we give them a lot of support. And we thought, well, what can we do for people who aren't part of a specific research study? So we decided, everybody's online. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And so for we'll say, that. what if you want to change your diet? And we're going to do this on a certain day. Five days before that, I'll send you an email. And the email will, will say, we're going to follow a healthy plant-based diet. Better get ready. Look at what's in your fridge. If you don't have healthy foods, let's put them in there. Four days before, it will say, I know we're going to eat out at restaurants. Try these choices. Three days before, I'll give you menus, recipes. And then on, on that day, when yeah. we're going to change, every day you get an email from a celebrity or a doctor or an athlete who will give you oh, menus, recipes, so little inspiring. embedded cooking videos, and you get it for 21 days, plus you're a part of a message board where you can say to, we usually have about 20 or 30,000 sure. people. 20 do, or 30,000 peop thousand people. 20 or 30,000 people doing this at the same time. And so, so if you say, we've got a big holiday coming up, I've got a birthday, sure. I, need, I need a cake recipe that's healthy. Oh. In about 45 minutes, you'll have 20 recipes from other people that's who are doing wonderful. this. We have it in English. We have it in Spanish, we have it in Mandarin, and we have a program for people from the Indian subcontinent. It's, it's an English language program, but all the food is Indian type food. What a valuable, mm -hmm. valuable resource for someone who is nervous, they're sticking their toe in, but they don't want to fail. Yeah, and let me tell you where you get like. it. It's at pcrm.org, that's our website. Okay. PCRM, PCRM. Dot, that's Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, pcrm.org. And you go there, it is free. And I just hope that people really put it to work I and they let their family you. members know about it Wonderful too. Wonderful of you. So thankful. I'm going to let you chew on that for a little bit. We're going to go to a break. Enjoy this message from PCRM and we'll be right back. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. What would you say to a person who is just found out they had diabetes? And they're about to start injecting themselves every single day. Right. They have kids that depend on them. Um, is it too late? It's definitely not too late. Now, I always encourage people who have diabetes to continue with their doctor and follow their doctor's advice. But their doctor just has the best new treatment in their right. toolkit that they never had before. And that's the kind of diet that we, that we have tested here. This goes back to 2003, the National Institutes of Health gave us a very nice grant and asked us to, do two th to, to test two diets. One was the more conventional kind of diabetes diet that says, you've got too much sugar in your blood, so don't eat sugar and don't eat carbohydrate sure. foods that, that turn to sugar. But the other diet was a totally plant-based diet. And the reason that we were testing that is, if you look inside the cells of a person who has diabetes, the, the muscle cells in particular, they tend to be filled with fat. Fat is inside the cells. Okay. So we decided, let's try a diet that doesn't have much fat in it. We got away from the animal products, so there's no animal fat. We kept oils very low. And we had 99 people in this study. And what we showed was they lost weight, their cholesterol levels fell, but most importantly, their blood sugars came down. And in some cases, you would never have known they had diabetes. There's a woman named Rosa. Yeah. That's a real name. She had a weight problem that had persisted for a long period of time and her kids were really worried about her. And they said, why don't you try this plant-based diet? Her doctor was concerned about not just her weight but about her diabetes. She said, okay, she put it to work and it was all plant-based all the time. Mm -hmm. No limits on how much she ate but everything she was going to eat was going to be good for her. Sure. Vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans. 
As time went on, she lost weight, lost weight, lost weight, lost weight. She got, she slimmed down very nicely. She went back to the doctor. All traces of her diabetes were gone. Now, when I was in medical school, I have to tell you, we, we thought that was impossible. We said diabetes is a one-way street. Once you got it, you're never going to get rid of it. Right. But we now know that that's not true. Diabetes can go away if we get to it early enough. And the answer is to follow a healthy plant-based diet. A low-fat vegan diet is the prescription that we now recommend for everybody with diabetes. Keep in mind, this was all absolutely new a, a, sure. few, a few years ago. So, first of all, celebrities have jumped in, people like Ellen DeGeneres, Bill Clinton, who went vegan. He, and yes, he's slimmer, but he did it to protect his heart. And he looks younger. And he looks younger, he looks healthier. So that pro progress has, has occurred. From the research standpoint, though, we do many, many studies. Mm -hmm. We recently completed a study with Geico, the, the, yeah. the car insurance company, because they have lots and lots of employees, and some need to lose weight, some need to get their diabetes under control. So we offered a plant-based diet for people at right where they work. And it was really simple. Right in the company cafeteria, they had healthy food. And once a week, everybody got a little cooking class and support sure. group. And it was amazing. People lost weight. Their cholesterol levels fell. People with diabetes improved more than you would improve with even a prescription oral medication for diabetes. Every employer everywhere should be offering this. Yeah. Um, people were eager to sign up. We have recently did a similar program with the electric company. And other businesses are saying, wait a minute. Do you have any idea what we're spending on health care costs? Not to mention people having absenteeism. We can really go a long way toward fixing that if we offer healthy foods. And once people, people don't start out in the workforce. Sure. They start out in school. And as we were talking before the break, um, why not offer those very same things right from the beginning when kids start school so they have healthy yeah, habits awesome. and so you don't have to then counteract it later. It's okay. never too late but we should start early. We actually have two things on our website that I think might really help people. The first is we have lots of recipes and food ideas. But the other thing is we also have ways to help you stay on the straight and narrow, mm -hmm. whether it's tips for dealing with a party host who's really trying to push unhealthy things, um, or tips for when you're traveling. And we're encouraging everybody to make the new year their year for really okay. trying out a healthy diet. Everybody makes the same resolution. I yeah. want to lose weight yes. in the new year. But the problem is we have a million ways of doing that, some of which yeah. don't work so hot. Mm -hmm. So a plant-based diet is the best way to do it, and all the side effects are good ones. So we're getting close to the holidays, and um, we want to just enjoy and be with our family. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have unexplained joint pain. Um, is, you know, is there anything they can do to just, is food that powerful? <laughs> yes. Um, a lot of people have arthritis or they have headaches or other kinds of chronic pain. And you wouldn't think that food plays a role, but it can. Yeah. Um, here's why. Typical rheumatoid arthritis is inflammation inside the joint. Mm -hmm. Well, what's causing that inflammation? Very often it's a food. The most common pain trigger, if I can use that word, is probably dairy products. There are others. So when a person follows a plant-based diet and they get all these other things out, out of their diet, oftentimes their pain goes away. And it's been so great to see. Same with migraine headaches. It's party time, you expect the stress is gonna get to yeah. you. But a lot of people, when they get the junk food out of their diet, the dairy, the meat, the eggs, their headaches just aren't coming Disappear. so much anymore because the trigger foods are gone. I know we're running low on time, but I've gotta ask this question. Um, you're saying for all these, the pain management and diabetes reversal and cancer reversal, and, and doctors do have the latest studies, the latest and greatest studies. Is this something that takes a while to change the mindset of the medical community? It takes time to change medical practice. But we've done many studies now on diabetes. And the American Diabetes Association for several years has accepted our program as you effective for diabetes. Um, the same is true with cholesterol control and blood pressure control. Okay. The major journals now say, you know what, it's true. This really does work. And so it's really a question of, do you go to the doctor and get a pill with side effects that doesn't do anything else beneficial for you? Or can you change your diet where all of the extra effects are, are positive for you? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here with us today.
You can look up Dr. Neil Bernard on www.pcrm.org and you just have a, a wealth of resources available for people at home and I appreciate you sharing this with us. I mean, you didn't have to and this is the path you chose and I think, thank you so much. Well, I'm delighted to do it. I hope people take advantage of it for themselves yes. and for their loved, yes. loved ones. Yes, 2013 is your year. You're going to stick to those New Year's resolutions. You're going to feel great, look healthier, have that radiant glow. Your children are going to thank you for it. It's really going to make a lifelong, it's a far-reaching impact. And thank you for sharing that with us today. If you want more info on the show, you can go to www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.